Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Chasson. I'm the senior e-learning developer at Treliant, a company that does binge-worthy compliance training. And I reached out on LinkedIn and Twitter asking people what they would like to see demos of. And someone had asked about translations and probably some tips and tricks. So I wanted to share some tips and tricks for doing translations. Now, in my own personal um, work, I like outside of Treliant, <clears throat> I don't do a lot of translations, but at Treliant, we do quite a few translations. We, we've translated um, courses for companies that need two languages. We've translated courses for companies that need 21 languages. So we're pretty well versed in doing translations and here are some tips and tricks. Now, the first thing about translations is that if you have an English course like this one here and you want to send the course and you want to send the course out for translation to any language, uh, you can do that very easily in Storyline. So what you want to do is go to File and Translation and you can either export to XLIF or export to Word. Now, when you export to Word, uh, like both of them may be a bit meaningless to you. However, um, the translation companies, it's, it's meaningful to them. So I would inquire as to which, um, which output is preferable. We tend to export to XLIF most of the time. So when you click that, you can move choose your folder that you want it to save to and the title sometimes the title doesn't uh like it'll it'll say the title of your um, file name so i would usually underscore and put the language i want to uh, the target language now if you're getting many languages you don't have to do that step um, i just like to do it for um, to avoid confusion and then when you click ok it's going to export and then you'll get this um, output. So like I said, it may be very meaningless to you, but when the translation company imports it into their software, it will be meaningful to them. So that's exporting. Now let's go through importing a translation that comes back and some of the tips and, and, and tricks that uh, I have. For that. Okay, so when a translation comes back, it's either going to come back in the form you'll get you'll get multiple components depending on what you've asked to be translation translated. In this case, I asked for the XLIF or Word doc to be translated so that all of the on-screen text is in the course gets translated. That's that's what translates with the XLIF or Word doc. And then I also needed the SRTs, which are the closed caption files as well as a few custom narrations that I had done for this project. So we're going to go file, import, or translation, sorry, and then import. And then I'm going to go uh, find it. I believe it's in my desktop. And it's not an XLIF, it's a Word doc. It defaults to XLIF, so if you have a Word doc translation, um, you'll have to... Um, hmm, why is that not? Oh, I know why. <clears throat> One moment. Sometimes when a Word doc comes back, it comes back as a docx and you need to save it as a doc uh, because you can't import a docx for some reason in Storyline. All right, so I've just done that. File, translation, import. And we're going to go to desktops. And Microsoft Doc, and then we have our translation here. So once the translation is imported, you'll get a prompt to notify you. So you click OK. And then now you'll notice that all of your on-screen text has been translated. So that's great. What I like to do first is go into your player because while at Treliant we don't use a, we use a custom player, we don't use the storyline player, the text labels need to be adjusted to the appropriate language. So 
you want to go to text labels and change it from English to this is Spanish. And the reason for that is because your prompts to resume, if you don't, if you don't change this, the prompts to resume when a user goes out and then comes back in, they'll all be in English. Your prompts for, um, say, if a user doesn't choose an option on a on an assessment question, they'll that feedback will come back in English. So we need to change this. Okay. <clears throat> and then another thing that I like to do is go into um, our variables. So um, see how we have some some variables here that are text variables. For some reason, Storyline doesn't translate all of the text variables. So some of the variables don't um, adjust. So what you need to do is have those translated. So you may have to go back to your translation company and <clears throat> provide them with all the, the terms that didn't uh, translate so that you can get the translations back and import those. In our slide master, for example, and I'll show you why I, I mean that this is random, we have two, uh, two lower thirds. And so one of the lower thirds always, always translates. And these, these uh, text variables are identical. One of them always translates, the other one for some reason does not. There's no real difference. The only thing is that one has an animation on it, the other, um, the other has animations, but not an exit animation. Um, so for this one, this one's pretty easy because we just go to the other one, copy this, paste it in the appropriate place, but it's just something that you want to be, um, you want to be cognizant of because you don't want English terminology to occur in your, um, in your translated course. Now, the other thing with this course in particular is that we have some custom narration. So if I want to swap out the narration, I need to click on my narration and you can right click, replace audio and bear with me. So the narration, I've got a folder here from the translation company. They put the narration in a folder. And so I'm going to, I've got slide 1.4. I'm going to grab slide 1.4 Spanish and then options, import captions, and then grab the SRT that goes along with that. Then I'm going to make sure I shorten my timeline. And you may want to also audit the, um, the closed captions to make sure that they're coming in uh, synchronized with your um, animation because sometimes that doesn't, doesn't happen. Now, if you have a video, <clears throat> what you would have to do is do the same thing. You would do a, a replace video and go and locate the appropriate video and then re replace it and replace the captions just as you would with the narration. Another thing that we have are, um, we have these bumpers, which are just video. So if you have video that has on-screen text, which these do, these ones come up and they say in-depth, you would need to have another video created for the translated language or remove the video entirely. I would recommend having the videos available in the translated language because then it provides a more equitable experience between um, both versions of, of the course. But um, what I would advise is that any on-screen text in a video is built into Storyline so that, um, for example, sometimes our, our um, virtual monitors have some text and th like this one has just images, so it's not a big deal. But what we used to do was we used to have them built into the video and then we discovered when we were getting all of these translations coming in that that was problematic and created a lot more work. Um, so what we did in our current version of the course is we created the the lower third, or uh, sorry, the virtual monitor innately in Storyline. So do as much in Storyline as you can 
So if you if you have on-screen text built into Storyline, it's going to get captured in the XLIF and it will create a lot less work for you um, in the long run when it comes to videos. And, and then all I really do is I just go through each slide and I make sure that all of the alignment is correct, that there is no um, weird like orphan words or drop-offs in, in bullets. Um, and, and another thing that I do is I'll publish the course, preview all of the slides, and then I will make sure that our lower third, which is built into the slide master, doesn't overlap with any of the words. Um, one more thing that we were very cognizant of when we um, created later versions of our courses was the text boxes and translations. So um, as I mentioned in another video, a good rule of thumb, especially if you know that there's going to be translations, is to set all of your text boxes. And hopefully this one is, is set to that. Um, set them to shrink text on overflow. And the reason for that is because the translations may be more verbose than the English. And if they are, um, say, if we just copy this and paste it, you'll see that the, the uh, font size changes to accommodate. Uh, the text box doesn't change size, so you're not going to get a whole bunch of um, text overflowing from the slide, it's just going to be um, contained within the text box. And, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I do. I, I preview the course at the end, I go through, I make sure everything looks right, I make sure there's no English anywhere, and uh, then, then I call it a day.